Okay, guys, Happy New Year. I'm a little bit subdued today. It's January 1st, and I should be excited about 2025 and all the great things I have in store for you guys. However, January 1st, just had this terrorist attack in New Orleans, my hometown. I was actually supposed to be in New Orleans for New Year's Eve. I obviously wouldn't be on Bourbon Street at 3 a.m., but it still doesn't diminish the fact that this is a reality of life, a sad reality of life. My condolences and hope everything, my friends in the city, uh, are safe. And unfortunately, I'm going to CES next week in Vegas. Tons of people there. It's a reality that, unfortunately, we have to deal with nowadays. So just wanted to get that out the way. I promise to be more upbeat in the rest of the video. And it really, the purpose of this video was to be super upbeat because I'm announcing my product of the decade. I did my best of 2024 video already. But there's one product that came out in 2024 that's so good, it gives you unprecedented results at your listening position where you will get sound quality levels unheard of ever prior in the world, unless you've had this, you have this tool. It's just impossible to get this level of quality of performance without this tool. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel and happy new year again. This is going to be a great year. At least it's shaping up to be 2025. I'm going to have my Airbnb ready. If you've been following me on that note, I'm going to have an audiophile Airbnb. You can rent and spend a weekend with gear, some of the best gear in the world, the best total systems combined in the world. Uh, I've got some surprises still to share with you. And some of the brands that I represent have some new products coming out that you're not going to want to miss. However... I did want to put a bow on 2024 with what I should have put in my best of 2024 video. However, number one, I do represent the product, uh, Theoretical Applied Physics Bach. But this product deserves its own video because it's basically the product of the decade for me, <laughs> if not longer. It's the most indispensable tool I've found to date. And it's the Bach ORC module, the Optimal Room Correction, which... If you've been following me along, just to catch you up, I became a customer of the Bach after going and hearing the demo at the show. Loved it. Uh, talked with the owner. Was so impressed with the designer, Edgar. And eventually, I became a dealer on just the spatial processing, the crosstalk cancellation, the core of what was originally released with the Bach. And, that, and that's the only thing that has won all the awards to date, just that module alone. There hasn't been any official reviews that I'm aware of yet, especially from the major magazines, of the ORC Optimal Room Correction that was released this year. And so that's what Edgar released this year. And pretty much from my membership user group, which is among the biggest in the world of VOC users, I think people find the ORC module even more impressive than the spatial processing across on cancellation. Certainly, as a combined unit, time domain, frequency domain, crosstalk cancellation, all in one product, unprecedented ever in the hobby. Uh, and so much automation, it can be done in literally a minute. You don't have to learn how to do EQ, use estimated measurements around your head, one foot away measurements or clipple and try to estimate in-room responses that are all by definition, estimates are not 100% accurate. So what I wanted to do is have a full video that's coming up next. That'll be like maybe a part two or separate video where I walk through the entire interface with Edgar, the designer, walking you through the Bach for audio, one of the products I sell. It's the iPad app and how it works and how you go about doing it so you can see how easy it is and how you would go about using it because it's so different from any other product on the market. Nobody, it's not like just plugging in another preamp, you buy a new amp. It's very easy to learn how to do that. This is easy. But he's going to show you how easy it is, and you're going to get more acclimated to it. And then, of course, you can call me, have an um, email or phone call or demo session. You get 15 days free trial as, my, as a dealer for me. You can try it and see for yourself. But what I wanted to address in this video is some of the common misconceptions. There's always this argument of measurements don't matter. Just trust your ears. EQ, I don't like all that stuff on one side. And then the other side is all measurements matter. It's only measurements in, in that side. And usually the truth is in between. So what I wanted to do was showcase why Bach ORC kind of 
can cure both of the ills, the fallacies in relying 100% on measurements and the weaknesses there, as well as show people, learn on your own. I'm not here to lecture you and tell you you're an idiot if you believe, just trust your ears and DSP doesn't matter. The fact is you're going to be saying that about yourself if you believe that once you realize the power of DSP, the power of measurements and how it can correlate to what you hear. Once you do it yourself, then you're going to be like I was. I'm just like you guys. I would like to be Tiger Woods, uh, Tom Brady, Michael Jordan right from the start. And this hobby tends to make people think you just call yourself an audiophile. You're an expert. <laughs> I've got two ears. I'm as much an expert as anybody else. Let's say, just get some self-awareness, guys. It just doesn't work that way. There are levels to this. And that's one thing I've learned over my 40 years is that I have to have self-awareness of where I am. And where I was when I started is nowhere near where I am today. And so all these dogmas that people have, and coincidentally, some people just stay stuck in this rut forever of trusting their ears, not relying on measurements, not trusting their ears, correlating them to measurements, or learning that curve. And that's what I want to help you do. Because once you start understanding things more, then you're going to get the acumen closer and closer to a Tom Brady, uh, Michael Jordan in this hobby. If you just want to be a casual hobbyist, totally fine. There's lots of people that just like to go whack the ball at the driving range and go casually play, play t-ball, you know, as kids or whatever. And that's the extent of what they do in these hobbies. Totally fine. But now we have a product that even if you want to stay at this level and don't want to learn, it'll do everything for you. It'll automate it for you and allow you to A, B on the fly, not having to change any wires, gear, anything to allow you to hear the difference. Then if you want to go into the weeds and understand why it works, how it works, how you can nuance things, you can then take your level super high to get to that Tom Brady level because now science, physics has all been consolidated to allow you to get the highest possible performance from the gear that you buy. So much gear that you buy nowadays is so weak in terms of what it, you hear it at the in the room. It's great <laughs> empirically built and great in measurements, but once you hear it in your listening position, it's nowhere near as good. And to that end, what I want to start off with, with people that may be in this camp of trusting their ears and, and not being a believer in measurements and all that stuff, is to number one, I want to show you measurements in room from a major audio man, uh, reviewer in a major magazine that they published in their magazine. I'll pop it up here. And this is results, there's three different lines there of three mega dollar speakers. I mean, like six figure level speakers in this person's room. And you can see the measurements. They were too big to be measured outdoors, one foot away to get the quasi anechoic measurements. So these are spatially averaged room, in room measurements of this guy's room and speakers. These are horrid guys. Now, you may look at it and say, okay, what does that mean? Uh, it looks, it doesn't look flat, but who knows uh, if I go in there, it might sound good. And it may sound good depending on your level of experience. But I can guarantee you guys, I see that measurement. It's not like the, another common dogma in the hobby is, oh, if you haven't heard it, or, then you can't comment on it. <laughs> well, you don't need to taste dog crap to know that you shouldn't eat it. Uh, when you see measurements like this and you have correlated measurements to what you hear, you know exactly how bad this will sound relative to improved frequency response. And the other thing I want you to notice very carefully with these measurements is most of the problematic areas are under 200 hertz. And that's where even, uh, you know, there's guys like Danny Ritchie do a great job of measuring everything over 200 hertz, improving the speaker as best as possible over 200 hertz. But still, when it gets in your room, the room dictates things. And you can have a great speaker over 200 hertz, and it still sounds crappy in your room. Because if you have the measurements that I'm showing you here, that big suck out in that 100 to 200 hertz range is going to make every vocal sound hollow. It's going to 100%. You're not going to like it. Uh, and what I want you to do, if you've got Rune or any kind of EQ software, even for YouTube, there's a Chrome plugin that you could put. I may link it for you guys. And you can use EQ on YouTube video. So on your headphones, which kind of take the room out of the equation. And hopefully if you've got good headphones, they're somewhat flat. Go ahead and use the EQ to duplicate the curve that this guy gets in his room with those measurements, especially the dip between 100 and 200 hertz. I wouldn't even add DSP 
for the gain and those peaks, because you might even damage gear. Uh, you probably wouldn't damage headphones, but that's so bad. And you will know just from taking out the dip. But if you do both that peak and that dip in his response under 200 hertz, you will then know, oh, well, yeah, in this case, the measurements do matter. That does sound bad compared to uh, something that's flat or fixed. And so as long as you start at step one, I'm not taking you to Tom Brady level in this video, but I just want you to acknowledge that, hey, measurements do matter. That does not sound good. And then DSP can either make it sound worse or better. And if you just get to that level of understanding first, that's where I got to and said, you know what? It can make it sound better. Now with Dirac and certain software, when I would do it and I did it very primitively, sometimes DSP did make it sound worse. I was boosting too much, trying to make it too flat. And that's where some people get the impression that flat doesn't sound good to them. Well, what did they do to get it flat? If you boost too much, if you do things that the drivers aren't capable of doing, trying to get it flat to 20 hertz, there's lots of nuances to get to that Tom Brady level. And that's what the ORC helps you automate. Takes all that learning curve that I had to go through the hard way with Dirac and doing it on my own to realize that just all you have to realize is that measurements matter and DSP can help fix things. And surprisingly, the biggest learning curve for me is there's always been a dogma in the industry that you can't really DSP your way out of room modes and whatnot. Well, <clears throat> somewhat that's true, but it's too easy of a uh, primitive of a generalization because what I proved even when JR came back here and he uses still the standard mic techniques uh, around the room, when he was finding dips in my bass response, I was one for one doing DSP. This was at the time with just Dirac. And it was boosting its way out of nulls because bass and how sound sees your room is much more complex than we really understand and can model. You can't just take dimensions and know this stuff. It's a combination of factors. Sometimes when you boost in a dip, it won't do anything and improve that dip with the DSP. Sometimes it's a one for one and it fixes it right off the bat. And then sometimes there's a trade-off where if you do boost the way out of it, you may lose some dynamic range. So again, all of these things that I had to learn the hard way in the past and have conditioned people to maybe find ways to just, I don't want to learn it. I'll just stick with my ears and, and fall into that primitive. I don't want to learn it. I don't, I want to poo poo it. This is another way to enjoy it now. And again, it's try it for free for 15 days. If you don't like it, send it back. We don't have anybody that's ever returned a Bach audio or Dio. I mean, it's just that good. And the DAC alone, we don't even talk about it. It's one of the best DACs on the planet. People have sold their mega expensive DACs because the other thing that makes the Bach as a whole a very attractive piece is that it replaces your preamp and your DAC and your streamer. And when you have everything clocked and optimized digitally in one box, that's one case where separating boxes does not make sense. Extra connections, extra cables, extra distances to uh, with digital signals is always a potential harm versus benefit. When everything is optimized and done in one box, done by the right type of person, and you can't get any more credentialed in anything digital, audio, acoustic than Edgar, one of the smartest people on the planet. Nobody has ever created a product like this because it took over 10 years of R&D. No other company would invest that much time in this. He's got Princeton behind him. He's got, they own the patents. This is uh, an endeavor that never would have been done by traditional industry types and has never been done. So that's what makes this so special. That's why I'm so happy to partner with him. That's why I'm so happy to represent him and that's why so many people that have bought the Brock are super happy you can join the membership group talk to him i've put plenty of testimonials up there uh on the channel you can talk to him real time in my membership group if you want to join but if you buy from me you're going to get get the support from all these people and uh extra recordings that we find are great it's just a great user group but it's a great product because now whether you want to be a casual hobbyist or the most sophisticated you now have a product that covers it all for you it can automate it for you or if you want to get into the weeds and do even some uh, further nuanced stuff that we'll cover uh in this video that edgar i'll release in a zoom sh shortly then you can do that as well however you want to participate in the hobby it's there for you but at least to the extent that DSP can help you, in most cases, it can help you totally correct everything. But in some cases, you know, your room may still have a few little dips here and there. But guaranteed, pre-ORC, post-ORC, 
you will hear a benefit. You will hear a huge benefit, in fact, just with pink noise. And you've been seeing more and more people starting to use pink noise. I did it at some shows. Right off the bat, you're going to be able to hear the difference. But then with your music, any favorite clip you want, before and after, A, B, it on the fly. If you don't hear the benefit, then, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, not a person yet can't hear that difference. Okay, guys, sorry, I had a phone call come in. But I wanted to wrap up really quick and explain to you that ORC not only takes you, if you're a beginner audiophile, or just have always for decades stuck in that mindset of, I just trust my ears. I don't care about measurements. I don't care about DSP. Or you've been dogmatically programmed to think that those are bad. And for some good reason in the past, it'll help you prove it to yourself with AB on the fly. And it'll make it easy for you if you want to stay casual hobbyist. But what it also will do is for those guys that are really hypercritical, very much into measurements and stuff, and previous dogmas, prove some things wrong about measurements that they thought may be uh, dogmatic. One foot away measurements now that are 200 hertz and above, while still valuable and can help you, it's nothing compared to in-ear. Take into account your ear pinna at your listening position and the room reflections and the room itself and correcting for that versus whatever is right here. Uh, 200 hertz and above. It will also address estimates. You know, even Clipple has to estimate. Even Dirac has to estimate. And by definition, all of those things, by definition of an estimate, it's not 100% accurate. And with head tracking now, even if you move your head, this is next level DSP. And it addresses some of the common problems that these other software have had or manually boosting too much. Um, that's something that the dock won't let you do. The default is only 2 dB. So it can get mostly flat. It does the technique I used to share with you guys on Dirac of bringing everything down that it can and then just minor boost to get everything as flat as possible. And then on top of that, you have flavor curves for different high fidelity metrics do not mean exactly flat for everybody. Different types of music, different types of recording engineers still stay within a level of high fidelity metrics that have been proven by science, studies, human. If you're human, unless you're an alien, you're not going to like that <laughs> frequency response that I put up, okay? Or you may like it, but you know when something better is heard, okay? Put it that way. And so there, within that, even there's some nuances. So within ORC, you have Bob Katz curves, a recording engineer is very famous, David Chesky, Sean Olive, all of these guys have a little bit of flavor that, again, press a button and it does it for you. It puts their curve and their spin on their type of music that they like or that you like. You may find different curves suitable more to you. And that's what we have in our group. Some people like the Bob Capps curve. Some people like David Chesky or Sean Olive. And there's different types of music that are normally mastered for one versus the other. And so this is some a next level DSP and use of measurements that we haven't seen before. And again, everything is confirmed with the measurements at first, and then it'll take it again after to show you. And then on the fly, A-B testing. You cannot get more proof of a product than this. And that's what Edgar wants to do. And that's why he gives you 15 free days to try on your own. And it's revolutionary. And that's why I call it the product of the decade. Because I don't think any system is at its peak. Uh, and you're not hearing what you bought unless you've got this. Because now it's going to be tailored to you and your room. And you're getting what you paid for out of all the other great gear you have. So come to my house if you want to hear it yourself. Call me up if you want to buy it and try it. Um, you know, I can help you with that as well. And I'll see you back here soon with that video with Edgar walking through the entire interface. Stay, uh, stay tuned.